My Patreon supporters got to see preview images and work in progress shots of the figure as I worked on it. If you want to join them, all you have to do is donate even the smallest amount. Link is in the description below. Alright guys, after a long time, it's finally time for the last figure in Ryanic's commission. Clove the Pronghorn. Elder of the Pronghorn siblings, um, uh, and the egg bosses of, uh, of Mobius' equivalent of North America. Which is, I find kind of funny, because that's where I live. Haha. <laughs> okay, so, as per usual, I'm going to go into the backstory of the character. Such as it was, since the post-Super Genesis wave continuity only lasted a couple years. Uh, which is a shame, because it's actually pretty good. Um, Clove is one of the egg bosses that kind of serves Eggman a bit reluctantly. She doesn't really see any grand purpose in his conquering of the world, but saw him as a means to an end since his technology was the only thing that could save her sister's life. Despite this reluctance, she, was actu she actually served the Empire fairly well, since she got to rise all the way to the rank of Egg Boss, and was well liked by her soldiers. Uh, she was actually pretty popular among them, which means that they didn't get punished by Eggman, so she must have been doing something right for him. Um, although, her concerns were always primarily about her younger sister, whose, um, whose condition was always never very far from her mind. Um, in the rare instances that we actually got to see Clove in action, she proved herself to be more than a competent fighter, with some awesome laser scythe thing. I mean, that's straight out, that's straight out of Gundam Wing right there. Um, and there was a time that she confronted Princess Sally. Uh, during the Sonic Unleashed arc, uh, she was guarding one of the, one of the Gaia temples, which turned out to be a decoy Gaia temple. Um, showing her reluctance to truly serve Eggman, um, when she found out that the Gaia temple she was, she was guarding was only a decoy, she chose not to let him know that so that Sally and the rest of the Freedom Fighters could get to the task of freeing, of, of restoring the world relatively unmolested. Of course, the arc that never really got to conclude was centered mostly around Cassia's condition. After she collapsed um, during one of the missions where Bunny took the Chaos Emerald from her, uh, Clove confronted Eggman about how her condition was still worsening. That's when Eggman dropped the bomb that his cybernetic upgrades mitigated her condition, but were never intended to cure it. It was basically revealed that Cassia is essentially a hostage, and if Clove were to ever lose her loyalty or fail to serve Eggman properly, then um, it would pretty much seal her fate. In this way, Dr. Eggman assured the loyalty of someone that he knew wouldn't really, um, fo would, wouldn't really follow him otherwise. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, in, the, in the Archie Sonic comic, the fact that he's a mad genius really does shine through. A lot more than it does in pretty much any other continuity aside from the Sad AM cartoon. Um... So yeah, like, I really would have liked to see this story arc conclude. Like, what would have happened? What if Cassia found out that she was basically a hostage? Would she have sacrificed her life to help to help Clove and, and her men uh, become free of the Eggman Empire? Would they quietly try to undermine the Empire from within in such a way that they wouldn't get caught? Um, you know, because... In the pre-Super Genesis Wave continuity, there were egg bosses that were quietly trying to work with the Freedom Fighters behind the scene. They could have been one of them. Sadly, we'll never really find out, probably, because Ian Flynn has already said in an interview that the characters that he created for the comic aren't going to be appearing in IDW's reboot. This doesn't mean that the Freedom Fighters from the original Deke cartoon won't make an appearance, hopefully, but, you know, that basically means Cassia and the other, the other egg bosses, uh, the, the people from the, from Meropolis, all those are pretty much gone for now, which is sad. But, let's pick ourselves up by making the toy itself. The base figure is, of course, Blaze the Cat. Anyone who saw would probably notice that she has almost the exact same physique, uh, which, again, just like it was convenient to make C Cassia out of uh, Amy Rose, goes to the fact that the post-Super Genesis characters had more in common with the character designs from the video games, which is a boon. And, since it's a Jazz Wars figure, you can dismantle her all the way to get all the painting and sculpting in. This is literally something I cannot do with the Tomy figures. So let's start with the head. Uh, basically, I just cut off all these 
pointy outy bits, and then sculpted on new pointy outy bits, including the bigger deer horns, the tiny little antlers, and the hair that goes the other way, and of course, her much longer muzzle. Uh, I, I kind of like it how, how most of the comic book characters have much longer muzzles than the characters from the video games. It kind of helps uh, settle the two styles apart. Um, paint, I, I really like the, the paint job. I, I mixed an original uh, shade of green by mixing a teal color, or more like a periwinkle, with, with the regular green. And it just came out really nice, and it really looks like her color from the comic. But now I'm just tooting my own horn. Um... Now, she does have something resembling coattails, uh, but it's not two separate coattails like like, bla like blazes. It's just one coattail. Of course, you know, it, it's really easy to sculpt that on and add her tail, so this part was actually not that hard. In fact, the rest of the sculpting wasn't really hard at all. Uh, just put the buttons on her lapel for the little Eggman shirt uniform, uh, re-sculpt the glove cuffs for her, you know, her Eggman... A thing like everybody wears a stylized version of Eggman's costume is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, the feet had some interesting sculpting because uh, she has um, her her hooves, you know, her splayed deer hooves show through her boots, unlike Cassia's. In fact, I think that most of Clove's cybernetics are concentrated in her legs. I think that thing on her ankle is like a bolt for her ankle assembly, and it would explain why her hooves look like they're made out of metal. So yeah, then if uh. If Cassia's cybernetics are mostly in her head, Clove's cybernetics are mostly in her legs. And there is Clove, the completed figure. I think she came out really nice. Then again, she is based off of the Blaze figure, and Blaze is one of the nicest figures that Jazzgore's made. It's just really cool. Um, but yeah, I really do love the way it came out. Like, I love how... Her unique shade of green came through. How I was still able to, to use the original uh, line of, of Blaze's eyes for her eyelashes. Even though I had to paint the irises farther apart to account for the wider muzzle. And um, I, I really love the way that the, the little antlers came out just the right shape. Let, let me tell you, that was getting those antlers the right shape was, um, it was kind of a neurosis that, that I had. I, I actually got to the point where I completely sculpted her head at one point, and I just took everything off and started over from scratch because I didn't like the way it looked. Uh, but she looks great next to her little sister. Uh, so yeah, this is, um, I call this a success. And it's kind of funny how Ryanic wanted, like, a whole bunch of sibling sets, like, between the Echidna siblings and now the Pronghorn siblings. I think he had a theme going. All right, so that's, uh, that's Clove. Uh, thank you all for watching the video, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Wake Angel 2001 signing off.